Uh, hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today I have a nice PV diagram uh, cycle problem. What we're going to do is we're going to consider uh, a monoatomic ideal gas and we're going to bring it through this process. We're going from A to B, that is a constant pressure. Then we're going B to C, that is at constant volume. And then we're doing this other jog from C to A, which... Uh, both pressure and volume vary along that straight line. So this is a different type of process, right? It's not like the Carnot cycle had different shapes for these lines. And what we want to do here is for each of these uh, processes, what we want to do is you got to calculate the change in internal energy of the gas, uh, the heat that's either been put in or taken out of the system, and the work done by the gas or by the system. So we want to do that for each process, and we also want to do it for the complete cycle. At the end, we want to use all that data to calculate what is the efficiency of this cycle. All right, like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. It's the best way to support Physics Ninja. All right, let's get started. All right, question one says calculate heat, change in internal energy, and the work for each process. Again, I've told you it's a monoatomic ideal gas, but I haven't really told you uh, how much gas, how many moles of gas am I bringing along, but I've only given you this information. Now we start here at, a, we're going to start at A, and we're going to go from A to B. All right, so first thing we can calculate, well, I'm going to start with the work. Now this is a constant pressure process, right? The pressure is always three times 10 to the five Pascals. Now, how would you calculate the work? So we have to, what are we doing here? We're doing either doing the work done by the gas. Since this is an expansion, right? The volume is getting bigger. I'm going from 0 0.3 to 0 0.8. The work done by the gas has to be bigger than zero, right? The gas is pushing that piston, right? To a larger volume. Uh, the work done on the gas is simply the opposite sign, okay? In that case, would be less than zero, the opposite sign. So let's do the work done by the gas. This is pretty straightforward. The work done by the gas is simply going to be the area under the curve of the line going from A to B. In this case, it's just a rectangle. It's pretty straightforward. If you actually would write that down, you write down PDV, and I'm going from an initial volume of VA, and I'm finishing at a final volume VB. Now, since this pressure is constant, you simply take it out of the integral, and the rest, you're simply integrating dV. Well, that's nothing more than the volume, and you have to evaluate it between both of those limits, so you get VB minus VA, right? That is the area under the curve of the line going from A to B. All right, so now we could just substitute our values here, so the work done by the gas. Uh, P was three times... 10 to the five. And the difference in volume here, this is 0 0.8 meters cubed minus 0 0.5. Uh, we put that in uh, the calculator and you should get 90,000 and that is automatically in joules. All right, the work done on the gas would simply be minus 90,000. All right, next thing we can work at now is uh, the change in internal energy. So I'll call this this, let's do delta U. Delta U is also pretty straightforward. Now, since it's a monoatomic gas, our change in internal energy is simply given by this. Uh, three halves N, the gas constant, and multiplied by delta T. Now, we need the temperature here at point A and point B. What are the temperatures? Well, actually, you don't actually need them, okay? Let me show you why you don't, okay? If I go three halves, let me just kind of expand this. NR... And this I'm going to write as TB minus TA, right? The final temperature minus the initial temperature. Now, if you consider just this part right here, right? NR multiplied by TB, and think about the ideal gas law, right? We have PV, which is equal to NRT. So if I write everything, for example, at point B, I have pressure at point B, volume at point B, equals to NR and temperature at point B. Well, that's exactly what this first term is right here. So that means that uh, we can rewrite this in a better form considering all the values we're given here. So here I would simply write as PB, VB, and minus PA, VA. Now again, we have the factor three halves. That comes from the definition of the change in internal energy. And we also have a simplification, right? Because we have that the pressure at point B equals to the pressure at point A. So that makes things a little bit simpler. So at the end, we just substitute our values here and you can take out uh, the pressure. 
So what we have is three halves. Let me take out the pressure. Uh, pressure at, just call it point B, doesn't matter which one you do. And this is again the change in volume. So those last terms, they look exactly like what I just calculated up here. But anyway, we could substitute in all the values. We have three times 10 to the five for the pressure. And then we have this change in volume again, 0 0.8 minus 0 0.5. Uh, this, at the end of the day, put that in a calculator, you get 135,000 joules. That's the change in internal energy, okay? And that is getting bigger, right? It's a positive number, and the temperature at B is going to be bigger than the temperature at A. All right, the last thing we want to calculate now is the heat. Is there heat going into the system or heat leaving the system? Uh, for that, what we're going to do is we're going to use our first law of thermodynamics, uh, the first law of thermodynamics is delta U equals to the heat. Now you have to be a little bit careful here. It's the heat minus the work done on uh, by the gas. Okay, and I use the negative sign if I use by the gas here. I would use a positive sign if I do the work done on the gas. But we've calculated by the gas up above, so let's just stick to that. So now you just rearrange this, and it's simply what? It's delta U plus the work done by the gas. All right, so we put in our numbers now, we have 135,000 for um, the change in internal energy. Now, let me just remove the units here. And what else? Uh, plus the work done by the gas, which was 90,000. And at the end, you add those up and you get a work of 225,000 joules. So what does that mean? That means for this process, there is heat going into the system. It's a positive value. Uh, heat going into the system, 225,000 joules. All right, so we have our three quantities now for this process A to B. Let's look at the next one from B to C. All right, for the process B to C, well, the first thing that should jump out at you is that the volumes are the same, right? VB equals to VC. Uh, that means that there is no change in volume for that process. There is a change in pressure, however, but if there's no change in volume, right away we should know that the work done by the gas or on the gas, by definition, has to be equal to zero, okay? So that's an easy one for uh, the work. And if you look at our first law of thermodynamics down here, if you set the work equals to zero, it means you're left with that the change in internal energy has to be equal to the heat, right? That's a result of this first statement. Uh, we can calculate the change in internal energy again. It's my three halves and R delta T. This is going to be TC minus TB. Again, I'm going to use the same trick as what I did before by grouping uh, NR with the temperatures, for example. Uh, I can rewrite this in terms of pressure and volume. Now, it's three halves here. I'm going to have the pressure at point C, the volume at point C, minus the pressure at point B. Uh, multiplied by uh, the volume at point B, All right? So the final values minus the initial values. Now the volume is the same, right? So what you can do is just take out the volume, just take it VC, and now here you're just left with the change in pressure, PC minus PB. All right, now we can substitute our values, so we get the change in internal energy is three halves. Uh, the volume over here is 0 0.8 meters cube. And now this delta in pressure is uh, 1.0 times 10 to the 5. Oops, let's get rid of that thing. Minus uh, 3.0 times 10 to the 5 pascals. My change in internal energy then. Again, I'm going to get a negative value here. And I get minus 240,000 uh, joules for this process. So I'm going from a high temperature toward a low temperature. I'm losing internal energy here. Uh, the heat then, by definition, has to be the exact same as my change in internal energy, 240,000 joules. Guess what? Now, if you go on this diagram and you plotted, this would be heat leaving the system, right? This is Q out, uh, which would be equal to this value. All right, let's look at our last process now, going from point C to point A. All right, for process CA, uh, let's calculate. Let's start with the work again. Again, I'm considering the work done by the gas. Now, if you think about it, the work done by the gas, this is a compression, right? I'm starting at a large volume going toward. So this work done by the gas should be less than zero, right, for a compression. 
All right, the way you write that mathematically here is by the gas. Uh, you would simply evaluate this integral, right? And you're starting at VC and you're finishing at VA. Now, that seems like a lot of work, and this is going to give you the right answer, but you have to write the pressure as a straight line equation here and substitute it into this. What you have to remember it is the area under the curve, right? If you have any type of process. Now, the area under the curve here is going to give me a positive number. So just to make sure that I have the right sign, I put a negative number at the front. Now, this is simply just a trapezoid shape. So um, the, finding the area is pretty straightforward. It's going to be one half. It's the average value here between points A and point C. And multiplied by this width, right? This width here is uh, VC minus VA. Okay, uh, we can substitute in all our values here. So you get minus one half. Uh, PA was three times 10 to the five plus one times 10 to the five. And VC, I have 0 0.8 minus 0 0.5. I think if I put uh, all the values here, what you should get here is again, a negative value minus 60,000 uh, joules is the area under the curve. Yeah, and you can always break that down into a, a triangle and then add the area of the rectangle underneath and you're going to get the same value. Okay, so that's the work. Uh, next thing I do is the change in internal energy. Same kind of game we've been playing all along, NR delta T. I use the trick again just to substitute it in terms of the pressure and the volume. So you have this. Uh, now it's final minus initial. So it's PAVA and minus PCVC. Okay, now uh, substituting our values here, we get a change in internal energy of uh, three halves. Pressure at point A was three times 10 to the five. This is 0 0.5. Minus one times 10 to the five. Pressure, uh, sorry, volume is 0 0.8. Uh, put all those numbers in the calculator. Now it's not obvious whether this is going to be um, positive or negative, actually. So you just have to do the math here. It ends up being a positive value, 105,000 uh, right, joules. All right, and our last bit now is simply calculating the heat. So the heat you can write as change in internal energy plus the work done by the gas. All right, put that in the calculator. Again, you get a 105 for a change in internal energy. And now the work done by the gas was minus 60,000, right? So you get minus 60,000 here. And at the end, this gives me plus 45,000 joules. So what does that mean? That means for that process, again, there is heat that is going in to the gas, all right? Because we have a positive number over here. All right, let's calculate now the, um, the heat, the change in internal energy, and uh, the work done by the gas for the total cycle. All right, let's look at this table here. I filled up all the values we calculated. So again, uh, for process A to B, we had change in internal energy, we had heat going into the system, and there was work done by the gas. Uh, for B to C, we had no work done by the gas because the volume was constant heat leaving the system and that uh, changed the internal energy of the gas and c to a we had all three contributions right there was uh negative work done by the gas in that case volumes getting smaller what else heat was put into the system and it changed the internal energy of the gas now what if i want to know what the value is for the complete cycle all you have to do is simply add them all up and you can see over here that when you add them all up, if I start at any point and I go back and I do a complete cycle, there is no change in internal energy because the temperature hasn't changed. I started at point A with temperature TA and I went back there. So there is no change. Now if I sum, for example, the work done by the gas, that's an easy one, right? 90,000 minus 60,000, I get 30,000. Okay, that is the work done for this complete cycle. That also represents the area inside this closed cycle. Okay, that area is 30,000 joules. 
Now, if you think about the first law here, uh, the first law is given by this. If you apply it to the full cycle, uh, you'll see that since we have delta U, which is equal to zero for the full cycle, it means that whatever work you did by the gas has to be equal to the heat. And again, if you sum these values here, you can see right away, you're also going to get 30,000 joules. Okay, and it's a positive value, which means that there is heat going into the system. All right, the last thing I want to calculate now is the efficiency for this cycle. So let's finish this video off and go to the next page and calculate it. All right, last question. What is the efficiency of this cycle? So we start with a definition. Uh, the efficiency of a cycle is given by how much work was done by the gas through one cycle versus how much heat did you actually put in to that system? So the work done by the gas is what we just calculated, right? Uh, we had a net work here, if I can consider the total cycle, was 30,000 joules, okay? Right, we did the area inside this uh, triangular shape here. Now, how much heat did you put in? Again, there was heat at each of these processes, but we only want the values where the value was positive because that's energy we had to put into the system. So it's really the, just the sum of both of those. So in this case, it's 225,000 plus 45,000. All right, you sum both of those up, you should get 30 over 270. Uh, this gives me an efficiency of 0 point, say, 111. Uh, the efficiency is 11.1% for this cycle. Okay, and that's it. That's how you calculate it for um, this triangular cycle. All right, that's it for me, folks. Thanks for watching.